I think all of us here really, really love meat. Mm -hmm. But the one person that loves meat more than anybody <laughs> is Mark. So uh, how much meat have you had this week, Mark? I don't know. You know, I, I, I do eat I do eat quite a bit yeah, I know. of meat, um, especially like after I've fasted. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, one time I came home from the gym and uh, probably just slaughtered like maybe a, a it was a tomahawk ribeye. I think it was yeah. gigantic, but you know, I do, I do smash a lot of meat in a, in a given day. Um, what I like about the Piedmontese, uh, beef though, is a lot of, for me, a lot of times I have trouble because I do love the fattier meats. Mm -hmm. And so I still might go over my calories, but with the Piedmontese, I don't know how they do it, but their, their steaks are a lot leaner, but they're still super tender. Yeah. I don't know how they're doing it over there. And then on top of that, they cook faster. Mm-hmm. How are they doing it over there? It's crazy. It's But the thing is, it's so sick for people that are like having to diet and they still want to eat steak and they have to lower their fats or whatever, and they still want to eat that red meat. Well, Piedmontese is perfect because it's not as fat. I don't understand. It's crazy. And you're still getting a nutrient-dense food. You're getting a lot of protein. Um, the other thing that's great about this company uh, that I think separates it out from a lot of others is the fact that they're, they're giving you a cook guide. Mm. And like, I don't know about you, but like, I don't know a lot about cooking, man. I just like throw stuff in a pan a lot of times. I just put salt and gum, but this is actually pretty awesome. You can actually make tasty food. I'm not too bad with the grill. Mm. Andrew, where can people find out more about Piedmontese and where, where can they get an awesome deal? Cool. Yeah. Our friends at Piedmontese are hooking you guys up with an insane deal. Head over to Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com and enter promo code power project. If you can't spell that, well, maybe it's not for you. Enter that promo code for 25% off your order along with free two day shipping on all orders over a hundred dollars. You know, I've been on a ketogenic diet for a long ass time mm -hmm. and I've experimented with all kinds of stuff. And even in like the mid nineties where I started was with these keto strips, which sounds kind of weird because it's this thing that you pee on and then you see, uh, how you registered ketone wise. Um, I started out with the body opus diet many, yeah. many years ago and I've, I've tried all kinds of stuff. I've tried, you know, pricking the finger and all that. It's inconvenient and stuff. Have you ever messed around with any of this stuff? I honestly haven't. I've heard of the strips. I've heard of pricking your finger, but I've, I've never, ever tested my ketone levels. So like, why does someone, why would someone want to even test that? I think because the main reason why you would want to test it, and I, I'm not a fan of pricking the finger. And some people say, you know, the blood is going to give you more information than the, than the urine and so on. And, but I really don't think it matters a lot, but I think the reason why you're going to test is because you want to learn about how you feel and you want to actually know what's going on in your body. Mm. So if you get to a stage, you hear people talk about being fat adapted. If you get to a stage where you're producing a good amount of ketones, it will register when you pee on these strips and you'll be able to say like, okay, that this is probably the reason why I'm feeling a little bit better because I am producing more ketones. If you don't produce ketones or it's registering that you're not, you're going to have to make some changes in your nutrition right. because you're probably going to feel like crap because you haven't eaten carbohydrates in a couple days mm -hmm. and you're going to start to feel lethargic and, and kind of lose energy. The ketones can help be a preferred source of energy, especially for your brain. So it can help a lot with clarity. So you're going to want to kind of monitor it. You don't need to like pee on it five times a day <laughs> and you don't need to like, you know, gather all this research and information on it. It's just nice to know you're like, okay, well, I'm in a good, I'm in a good standing. And then if you cheat on your diet, you can see how your body reacts to all that too. Nice. If you have a big old carb meal, you're probably not going to uh, yeah. register a lot of ketones. Andrew, where can they find out more about these key? And plus, I forgot to mention, these are a lot cheaper option than pricking your mm -hmm. finger. So it's, and plus it doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys are on a ketogenic diet, don't front and just say you're on a keto diet, actually get your ketones tested. And you can do so today by going to perfectketocom slash power project, use code power project and get 15% off these uh, piece strips and everything else at perfectketo.com. You know, I've been uh, eating some Quest bars probably for the last, man, I don't know, maybe almost like 10 years, it seems like. Yeah. I don't even know how long the company's been around for, but ever since they've been around, I've been around and I've been eating them. And I remember actually the first time I had a Quest bar. Um, one of the first Quest bars I had, I believe it was like an apple cinnamon flavor or some or cinnamon roll flavor, I think it was the one that I had. And it tasted so different to me than what was out there 
uh, I, I've tried every protein bar that there is. And a lot of them would, you know, blow my stomach apart and I'd end up sitting on the toilet forever and I'd end up having s- some issues with them. And most of them are always trying to mimic like a candy bar. Mm-hmm. They were always trying to be like a chocolate coated something or other. And I really love that Quest Nutrition didn't do that because with the way that their bars are are set up, most of the bars, especially in the beginning, you could travel with them with no problem. You don't have this like men- melty gooey thing that you pull out of your backpack, you know, uh, while you're traveling. So they've done a great job making some great products. People got to check out the Quest bars. And if you never had one before, I don't know where you've been. I don't know what rock you've been hiding <laughs> underneath because it's a huge company. Yeah. yeah. And you guys know we've been rocking with Quest since day one, since before they were sponsored. They're a sponsor now. And it just makes so much sense that uh, us two two entities would collaborate on something. So if, if you guys want to get in on this, head over to questnutrition.com, enter promo code MarksQuest. That's all one word at checkout for 20% off your entire order. All righty, Mark. All right. We got through some uh, really awesome. We had, I mean, that was just great. We got, we got through a really good day. Are we just getting started or what? <laughs> just getting started. Oh my God. We uh, had an opp- I had an opportunity this morning to, and I don't, a lot of people probably don't get this opportunity. So I thought that was really cool. I had mm-hmm. an opportunity to cook with Andre Rush this morning. And uh, that was unbelievable. We cooked at our uh, friend's kitchen here in Sacramento, our friend's restaurant rather, Camden. And um, I mean, I learned, I learned a lot of stuff on how to, how to cook up some meat. Uh, so a lot of it was simple too. You didn't go too fancy, which, uh, was helpful to me cause I can get confused pretty easy. <laughs> and then, uh, we came over here to super training gym and had an, another great opportunity to throw down, lift some weights. And then we did that wine pairing. Yes, we did. Uh, we, we paired up a bench press with a particular wine. We paired up a squat with a particular wine. We paired up a deadlift with a particular wine, and then we just started having fun and getting drunk. <laughs> Don't remember the rest. No. Yeah, I, 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 you're right. I barely remember what else was going on. Hey, you know what? After working out with you, it's, it's always great to have these opportunities when we have guests here to get a training session in with somebody because you learn a lot about them just from the training session. And, you know, <laughs> and Seema and I have worked out for a long time. We're both in shape. And uh, we're kind of looking at each other like, <laughs> what's this guy doing to us? You know, <laughs> we started kicking our ass. Uh, we were doing bench press and push ups back and forth. And obviously, you have a huge passion in your heart for uh, weight training. What is the deal with these 2,222? I, I still can't wrap my brain around. I like push ups, and I feel like I'm somewhat proficient at push ups. And I feel like, uh, I guess if I wanted to, I could figure out a way to do 500 push-ups a day for a while and then I'd probably like wean off and probably stop doing them. You're doing over 2,000 every single day. What is this for? How did you work up to that capacity even? <clears throat> so um, I do 2,222 push-ups every day. Uh, it takes me about an hour, 15 minutes. Do them at, I'm just going to move your microphone this way just a little bit. You're all good. You can keep chatting. <clears throat> so I, I do them. Um, there we go. Um, every morning, get up at three o'clock in the morning, meditate, roll over, do them all at one time, 125 at a time, uh, or more, uh, rest for about 30, 40 seconds, then repeat. So the two, two, two is a specific number is 22 vets commit suicide a day. Um, I caveat that with, uh, the 2,222, not only for the vets, but the active duty, which now is the highest suicide rate has been since the war. <clears throat> also with their spouses, the kids. Yeah. And just everyone. It's it's about that feel good feeling about spirit and awareness. Or even with the two two two, I use it for just your cause. If you have a personal cause of something that's bothering you, or whether it be cancer, leukemia, or or something personal, or just you and personal. So I said, use it. Use it to your advantage. That is great that you're you know calling attention to this because you know a lot of these uh, men and women um, that that are struggling. I mean, it must be. It it's got to be a tough thing. I mean, you you survive. You survive a war or you survive, you know, uh, some of these events that are going on around the world and you defend the country and then you come home and maybe it's just the transition back to being a civilian has got to be really, really difficult. And a lot of a lot of people that are in the military, not just men, a lot of people that are in the military um, probably always had kind of a hardened mindset. So they might be sad. They might be this. They might be that. But they're like, they don't need help because they're a soldier, right? Exactly. Is that, is that what's going on? And I was one of those people. 
I, I, oh, you I, were I mean, one of those people. I, I was one of those people. I was that hard guy, you know. Uh, but being that hard guy was the reality check of it <clears throat> when I was called out by one of my principals, a general, who uh, kind of called me out because you you can only hide it for so long, and you can only do so much for so much time. And long story short was now speaking to literally t tens of thousands of military members over the last year and telling them it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to seek help, or it's okay to talk to someone. I mean, it, that right there is uh, undeniably like one of the most, the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um, I've had, I've been shown so much support from so many different people from all over the world uh, that advocates with it. You know, me being mm -hmm. that big guy uh, and people looking at me and saying, wow, he's saying this and he's saying this about this, about that. And now they're like, okay, chef, okay, I got it. I'm doing push-ups with you. I'm doing this with you. Mm -hmm. And I get to speak to just as many from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, um, and it's all about us helping and supporting each other. Not only military, so don't get me wrong. I, I speak to spouses, I speak to kids, which I use that same format and platform t for cyberbullying and bullying uh, because people understand this new generation is hard on the kids. They are the future. So they actually take it... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the youngest known case was um, little Samantha, who was six years old, who how is that even possible that a six year old mm -hmm. even know about things like that? And with the bullying part of it, I go speak to a lot of schools. So, it, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a big thing. And so it needs to be addressed. If it's not that and if someone has a personal cause, use it to that. You know, bullying is, is a pretty uh, interesting thing. And if you think about like um, when I was a kid and I and there was bullying going on, it was like. Most of the part, most of the time, from what I saw, it was kind of like a private thing. Like, peop, there would be three or four people in a group, and they'd snicker and they'd laugh at somebody that walked by, and they, oh, look at that kid, he walks funny, or he's got weird hair, or like he's got ripped up clothes, or whatever. And it, I never really, I personally haven't really seen a lot of like, you know, physical bullying or someone going up to someone and 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 actually just telling him, like, I think you look ugly, or I think you look stupid. Like I've never really, I haven't really seen uh, a lot of that. I'm sure that that happens too, but cyberbullying is pretty crazy because you're sending, maybe possibly sending a direct message to somebody or posting something on social media about somebody, and then it's calling attention to something that, like you said, this girl's six years old. It's calling it. Maybe you have, maybe you, maybe you're a little heavier than the other kids, and maybe people draw attention to that. Now you've got to deal. Now you're, you're just a little kid. You're not even thinking about whether you're heavy or whether you're cute or whether you're ugly or whether you're this or whether you're that. You're not thinking about any of that stuff. And now you see someone clearly wrote it out to you, you know, in, in, in a case of like cyber bullying. It's true. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty damn brutal. And on top of that, it's listed there and it stays there for everybody to see. So right. then when you get to school, it's like, oh, did you see so-and-so say this about so-and-so? And then meanwhile, that kid over there is already like, they're they just got, you know, brutalized the whole night, you know, everyone reading it, commenting on yeah. it, and then they got to show up to school and see it in person. It's terrible. It doesn't disappear. It could stay there forever. Yeah. It's like it literally is so much worse yeah. than, like, bullying is never good, but it's so much worse than what kids went through in the past. When it comes to these uh, soldiers and you're drawing attention to um, suicide, suicide awareness, um, what, are some, what are some procedures someone could go through? Um, if they are struggling with something like that, can uh, they can reach out and there's programs and stuff like oh, that? They have tons of programs, uh, you know, individualized programs for the military. Uh, that's that's the point about it is trying to get them to that point it is is that stigma um, that goes along with it with the military. You know, they say PTS, you're you're dangerous or you're this or you're that or whatever. I'm one of those guys who've had PTS for a very long time um, and I use that and say that. So that's why I personally go out and talk to so many on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. I just, in the last week, I've just. So you use it as almost an advantage in kind of a healthy way. Exactly. Like I'm exactly. going to use some of these bad memories. And, and you give them different resources because it's, all, it's more resources besides just that internally military. So right now in the military, if anything happens, they have to report it. If you go to them, they have to report it. There's other there's other outlets where you can go where it's not reported. You may just want to talk to someone. I've had, oh my God, I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people who just needed an outlet. They just needed someone to tell them that it's okay. Just needed this or needed that uh, on that level. From males to females to kids to women, abuse, yada, yada, to homeless. It doesn't even matter. They just wanted that, hey, it's going to be all right. Yeah, I think this is great. And I think that 
um, a lot of people listening could probably use some help that, and they're not even maybe aware of it because they're kind of suppressing. And I'm not even just talking about military, but sometimes you go through tough times in your relationships. Um, and sometimes you just go through tough times. Maybe you're still dealing with something from the time you were a kid and maybe you should reach out to somebody that could, uh, that could help you. But it's, it, that's the hardest part is kind of like taking that, uh, first step forward. How did you, uh, have the ability to build up to that amount of push-ups. That's a ridiculous doing doing 125 push-ups in a row is brutal. Um, yeah, for a normal person, <laughs> 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 I'm extraordinary. No, <laughs> no. Um, I, I've always been overachiever. I always loved health and fitness. I always loved my body. I I had the opportunity, which I was smart enough to study it when I was younger. Uh, I mean, when I say study it, I mean, feel like my body for if you if you have to cough, you're going to cough. If you're sick, you're going to take medicine if you did it. So I did this exact same thing on that aspect of of growth, of inner growth, you know, intestinal fortitude. Uh, when I did my push ups and started off, I found out that um, every time I maxed out the army PT test, <clears throat> I would um, overachieve it. Uh, so when I started doing push-ups, I was doing like 500 at a time and that was just easy for me. Then I did to a thousand, which was easy. And I had to try to get guys to go with me. They couldn't keep up. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. So now I've done over 400,000 push-ups mm. just for that, a cause and awareness. You know, but that, like, I think one thing when a lot of people listen to you and a lot of people even see you at the point where you're at, you're at now, um, they start to think like, oh my God, that's not possible. But they forget like the buildup. I think that's that's one of the big things like you didn't start off at 2222 a day, even though when, like where you started out was a lot like you've been working out for a majority of your life. What Like how long have you been working out in general? Oh, wow. I've been working out uh, since I was a kid. I mean, I was an athlete. I, I, I ran track. I played football. I was you know, I, I fought. I was a fighter. <clears throat> I did so many different things. And in those different platforms, you have to adapt. Mm -hmm. You can't use the same training for each and every last one. But when I got my niche, which again was at an early age, uh, this what I what we did today is what I've always done. It's always been my longevity. It's always been my go to, and I've always lived by it. And it's 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 kept me going the entire time. Yeah. So uh, now doing it two thousand two hundred twenty two, and and a lot of people's tried me and. Everyone has failed, so <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, you've uh, built up a really powerful mindset, and um, you know what? What is your mindset on a daily basis? You know, are you are you trying to think about like because the workout that we did was really intense? Are you trying to think about each day you're just gonna like crush every day, or like how how are you getting this stuff done? Because you do a lot. Um, you know what? That's a great question. I I just said that I just talked about um. 3,000 airmen and then um, um, uh, a couple of days prior I talked about a thousand Marines going into training and I didn't use the word crush I use the word destroy it <laughs> destroy every day mm. everything you do I don't care what your job I like that I, I don't care who you are who you think you are because it's so much of diversity and resiliency about you know you could be born with a born with a, a, a silver spoon or whatever it's called or you could come from the homeless so these guys come from all different diversity of backgrounds they have to adapt and overcome mm -hmm. And I tell him, if you're the garbage man, be the best garbage man you can be, you know, and change lives, you know, give back, be impactful. A lot of people kind of they have that stigma where they just, OK, this is where I'm going to be. I don't have any other goal and there's nothing more for me. I'm just going to sit back and just wait till I retire and die. That's not a that's not an option. Mm. Yeah, about, there's, there's a lot there's a lot of ways of, uh, you know, impacting people's lives. And I think sometimes people just forget the simple stuff. You know, holding the door for somebody, exactly. telling somebody they look good today or telling somebody that, you you know, you like the shoes they're wearing or something. There's little tiny comments that you drop, those little tiny compliments that you can give somebody. I mean, they're free for us to give. <laughs> you know, I, I, I I'll, every now and then I'll put a nip it up on my social media with a picture of myself. And I would like say something like, what are you complaining for? You woke up this morning. Say hello. Say good morning. And I'll get an overwhelming response of just, you know, thousands of people saying good morning. Oh, like, great. OK, <laughs> great. I will say good morning back to each and every last one. Right. Uh, but, you know, those things are important. You know, you got to sometimes we take things. We, we're in this world now where everyone is kind of overly complacent. You know, complacency is everything. Your entitlement, that whole entitlement thing is, is, is killing me in this day, in this world uh, today where, like I said, it doesn't take much. Just say hello. Say thank you. Say, hey, have a nice day. You never know what happened. Yeah. 
I think one thing is like when you're talking about that, like that's what I think is like I have a lot of relatives in Nigeria still, like a lot of relatives that are trying to come to the United States. And when I think about that, no matter what happens, like I got to be so grateful that I'm here in this great country. Like, like no matter what situation I'm in, I have it good because I'm here and I can like there's any everything's possible being here. So it's it's yeah, what you're saying is totally it's totally relevant. Like you really have nothing to, I don't know, get down on yourself for. It's true. Yeah. Who uh, instilled some of this in you? I mean, it's I, I understand, you know, the military background. And so a lot, a lot of great things are going to come from the military. Um, a lot of great disciplines will come from the military. But were, were mom and dad, were they pretty strict? Uh, dad was extremely strict. <laughs> dad was, as soon as I could, I got out of diapers, I think dad put me to work. <laughs> so uh, I... You weren't getting a free lunch from I him. was not getting a free lunch. <laughs> uh, you know, he was a tough man, uh, but I love it now because my work ethics have not changed since then. Uh, he put me to work. You know, at the end, he was like, girls go to school, guys go to work. You know, and I was like, what? <laughs> you know, and I worked. I worked hard and a lot. You You're know? like, dad, I'm six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was five and a half, actually. Uh, he said, I don't care. Uh, but... um. Even when I switched over to cooking, he I didn't tell him because that was that stigma like, oh, my God, you know, my mom, I used to secretly cook with my mom. And now, <laughs> you know, he was like, you know, Dre, you're going to go off and do this and this and so forth. And I had the opportunity to do it, but I love what I was doing at the time. And, you know, in, in my mom to her dying day, uh, which she didn't let me know that she was dying pushed me out the door and kept telling me just going. So that coin I gave you actually was dedicated to my mom oh, on the cool. front. Everything she'd say to me, like, never give up. You can do anything. Keep going. Um, that was from her right when she passed. So the long story with my mom passing was she didn't tell me. My sister called me. I was doing something um, for Gary V uh, in New York. Um, it called me. I, I went to him and got there uh, Saturday. She can walk, talk, breathe. Uh, long story short was she passed the next week. Um, and then the next week after that was a birthday, she was buried. And then the very next day I became viral again. Mm. Uh, I mean, not in a little way, like a big way. This was Saturday. Then Sunday I became viral. I was mad as hell because I'm like, I want to mourn. I want to mourn. But mm. at the same time, I realized um, it was my mom saying, keep going. Don't stop mm. what you're doing. You've come too much. You've given up so much. And so with me, with a lifelong journey, I I, I, I I use the word and I say to myself, my mom did this for me. I sacrificed everything with her to give back. And me giving back means everything to me. So it kind of happened simultaneously. Maybe, you know, maybe your mom's doing right. And, yes. And uh, to kind of keep your mind focused on. Exactly. You know, rather than, you know, mourning. Right. What did your mom pass from? My mom actually passed from a botch surgery. Oh man! It was I, uh, so three months was, prior. She yeah. was walking, talking, everything, and then when I fo finally saw her, she couldn't walk, couldn't talk, had lost sixty, seventy pounds, oh, man. Uh, just in pain. And then that's when I found out because she would leave me messages. Um, but it, by that time, she couldn't she couldn't speak at all mm -hmm. because uh, the doctor went in and and punctured and went through her thorax. Mm. And as an elderly person, which is, you know, by the elderly care in, in, in this in this world is that uh, sometimes it goes, you know, unnoticed, but when it happened with her, uh, her body just deteriorated. Oh. You have a big family and you, you learned, learned a lot of uh, great cooking lessons from your mom. Uh, what, what are some favorite things that your mom uh, used to cook up that you remember? Oh man, from the South Mississippi, uh, we were all about that round table type of deal. That's when I first met my brothers and sisters every time. Uh, but you know, from the sweet potato pie, uh, pecan pie or pecan pie, wherever you're from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dumplings, uh, collard greens, of course, it's just, you know, that Southern deep mm -hmm. home food that had that spirit that went along with it. Yeah. So that's what I uh, encompass in all of my meals that I do now, whether it be five star, whether it be cooking for the homeless. I, I tell people and I speak all the time uh, when they ask me about, you know, what did the president, what did the president? And I <laughs> said, you know. I said, well, my, my, my level when I cook for someone on that level is this high at 100%. But when I cook for the homeless or the kids, it's at 110% because mm. they'll never get it again. Mm. They, you know, the, those principles, they have it all the time. That's their lifestyle. These people and um, 
they may not have the opportunity. So I give them 100% of that attention. And uh, what are you talking about in meeting your brothers and sisters for the first time? They they lived in other areas or something? <laughs> no, they lived in the same house. <laughs> oh. oh, just everyone was all over the place all the time. No, I just didn't like them. <laughs> 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 but uh, we got to that table and mom and dad said, sit uh-huh. down. All of a sudden, it's like you meet them for the first time because everybody's laughing, everybody. And it's over food. You know, mm-hmm. I, I tell people food is to the heart where you can start wars and uh in wars and uh, make friends and I mean it's, it's so much more behind food that people don't understand and and now I, I hate the commercialized commercialization of it because mm. it's so so much deeper yeah do you think that triggered everything for you like to get into all this in the first place the fact that it, it did like maybe you were pissed at your brother or your sister but it brought everybody together um, well, no, not really. I mean, I love my brother and sister. You know, I, w- I was younger, so I was a younger kid. You know, my brother went out to the be an officer in the, in the Navy. My sister's an officer in the Air Force now. Um, and we all are givers, you know, education mm-hmm. system. And it was just likely, I think, it was just embedded in us mm-hmm. to, to do such. Uh, I mean, I'm doing it on a, 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 my scale, which is a pretty high scale, which I, I love to have an opportunity to, to reach so many people. You know, you just mentioned like your brothers and sisters were in the military. Your was your dad in the military at all? Or no, 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 no. My my dad didn't even have a uh, high school diploma. Wow. He went working when he when he um, what he stopped working at like, I mean, stopped school when he was like maybe seven years old. Yeah. You know, uh, to to support his family to mm-hmm. help. Right. I mean, literally seven. <laughs> I mean, yeah. seven grade, seven grade. That is. Um, and uh, from there, he learned and did everything and built his entire empire from that. So for you, going into the military, was it something you wanted to or was it like your brothers and sisters, older brothers and sisters went into I, it? I didn't tell anyone. Um, okay. Even my brother who was, in, was already in the military, I, I, I was always my own path. I didn't want anyone to try to convince me or guide me to something. I did 100% of everything. Even my brother asked, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. I said, because you're going to try to get me to go into the Navy. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's nature. I, I wanted to find out for myself. I was scheduled to go to the Olympics for uh, track and field. Wow. And um, uh, I, I wanted to go into the military. So uh, that's what I did. Wow. Yeah, didn't you say you, you ran 100 meters under 10 yeah. seconds? Under 10 seconds. Nine, 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 eight. That is insane. So, and then also you benched 700 pounds before. Yes, yes. That was so there's not many people who've done the combination of those two things. <laughs> that's uh, that's unbelievable. Um, what what do you think uh, it takes to be a uh, celebrity chef? Like how did how did some of this come to be? How did you end up being in this spot? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it was it was a, a long story, but long story short was it was a, when I was at the White House and someone. Uh, Kate Bennett, who was a reporter, uh, along with another lady, she took um, she took a picture of me, which I didn't want because mm-hmm. I kept ignoring her. But when when the president came out and was going inside to the press room, she turned around and she took a picture of me. And she walked out, walked over to me, and she said to me, "I'm going to make you famous." And I was like, "I'm already famous." And she was like, uh, no, 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 look at your Twitter. And I'm like, I don't have Twitter. So I'll oh, look at your this. I'm like, I don't have that either. So I'll look at that. I don't have that either. <laughs> I didn't have any of that stuff. I wasn't that social media person. Yeah. And when the guy, was, uh, one of my guys turned around and did it and uh, saw it, uh, it was in the millions. And then it just kind of like took over. Uh, the long story short about it was people say, so did you get famous off of a picture? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I got a famous off of hard work. Right. Right. I mean, Everything you do is you have to take an opportunity and, and make it your own. If you, you're giving an inch, you know, take <laughs> take a lifetime. You know, mm-hmm. just take a, a mile, take a lifetime and just keep going with it. And that's what I do because people want to be around impactful people. And the things that I did always was organic. It was, you know, one of my favorite hashtags is, that I have is, is uh, be humble, stay humble. That humility is everything in the world. Some, even other guys who went viral and whatnot like i said in the last 15 months i've been viral three times uh but even other guys said hey chef how did you do it i said i was myself Hmm. what was like the journey to the like cooking at the white house 
like was were you cooking in the military before that then somehow got there like yeah i was in the military the whole entire time so okay. i work for a lot of people i mean i've cooked for a, a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, even more so i probably show 30 percent on social media other 70 percent i don't even talk about because it's just so much and so massive and i don't, I, I don't have time <laughs> uh, but um uh it, that was about knowing and helping someone. So that's the only way I got into the wild. I did some and I helped someone. They mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity. I knocked on the door. And then from that, it was open. And I just used it to my to my skill set. And don't get me wrong, it was hard. Yeah. I mean, I was that lonely guy. I, I didn't fit in. I was different. I mean, I was, uh, you know, like that meathead who just, now when I say meathead, I said that. It's like, man, that cook eats a lot of our food. I, I, yeah, exactly. And I'm still doing the same thing. <laughs> Drinking all your wine. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I know, I remember as a little kid when you went over someone's house that had a nice home and it, you know, it was, uh, it was just, you know, it was clear that they had a, you know, a good amount of money. I remember like always being like worried, like I was going to break something. Like I'm like, all right, oh. I gotta take my <laughs> shoes off. And like, I got to pretend to like be more mature than I really am for 20 minutes or something, you know? Um, did you feel that way in the white house? Like it, it, that must be a weird feeling. Like I would be super nervous trying to prep food for people in the white house. Um, you know, it's funny you ask that question because I work with so many different people, um, from chairman's joint chief of staff that done things for Kings and Queens and, um, I've never been nervous. You've had a good amount of experience too, you know, going into that situation with the White House too, uh, right? Well, uh, even even when I was younger, you know, seeing people, uh, I was never a, um, a, a what, do you, what do you call them? I, I never, I had never asked you to take pictures with anyone, mm -hmm. just because it wasn't just my nature. I was that, I was that guy. I came to do a job, even in the White House. I, I didn't even look at it. Mm. I was going straight to where I worked. That was it. I didn't realized that I was supposed to admire everything about it until much, much, much later mm. because I was hired to do a job and I just did my job. That, that was my, like I said, that was my dad. My dad said, you do, you're here to do a job, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay, I got it. Yeah. What do you want done? And I'm the exact same way now. So when I do a job, even now, I do it a thousand percent. So maybe like combination of confidence and just focus. Oh, oh yeah, arrogance and confidence. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, it is confidence. It has to be confidence. You have to be, you and honestly, you have to have a, a sense of confidence and you also have to have, have a sense of arrogance because there's gonna be people that's gonna try you mm -hmm. all the time. There's gonna be people that's gonna try to uh, de devalue your worth. Uh, that's the one thing that people need to know. You need to know your worth and what you're worth. Some people who have been in higher ranks than I am, they're like, hey, uh, Andre. I'm like, no, that's sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And not being disrespectful, but people want to make it seem like they have their their foot on your head, and you have to let them know mm -hmm. it's it's not like that. This is a different world, a different time. I know my worth, I know my value, and I know what I contribute to myself, society, this world, so forth and so on. I like what you're saying there because I think a lot of people don't understand that people are trying to devalue you all the time, and it's not because they're trying to like outwardly, uh, they're not trying to attack you, and they're not trying to like fight you or anything. Um, but it's just part of human nature, especially when someone's going to be hired to do a job. Anybody that's ever watched, I'm a huge fan of the show Shark Tank. Mm. They immediately take your, your evaluation of what you valued your company and yourself to be, and they chop it like in half. They're like, you ain't worth that. And those people have to try to stand there and stand their ground against these sharks. And I think that in life in general, I think people need to do that. They need to stick to their guns. And you hear story after story of like, oh, this guy, you know, he passed up this gig to make you know 80k and he he held his ground and held his ground and then bam he like made it and ended up you know uh with a huge success story it, it is true you know what i i 100 agree with that um and, and even now I, I i turn down so many things and it could be something as simple uh character character is everything to me loyalty is everything to me and you know i i was going around your staff which is magnificent by the Thank way you, appreciate that. uh and i i said to them i think each one of us is you, you don't know how important it is to have like-minded, like-hearted, a team. It is me doing this, I do everything solo, 100%. I've fired lawyers, I've fired this because they weren't in my in the right interest of what mm -hmm. I wanted to be as far as giving back and it became money. I get, don't get me wrong, I get the money part about it, but at the same time, it devalues what you really are worth to so many more. Mm. With your cooking, like, like you said that your mom taught you a lot about cooking. So 
was there anybody who helped you get to the next level or continue to improve at that? You know, someone who was critical against what you were doing that helped you learn that? Or were you just like doing new things, getting the hang of it and moving on? I, I'm going to be honest with you on that part. I was in the military. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of cooking. I've met a lot of people. Um, and I'll, I'll go back. I was a hard charger. I was I worked for people. And that was my only thing is to make um make them look good. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times people take that as a threat. They'll they'll look at you as, you know, my first competition, I was a brand new private and I I had a senior guy who was there and he saw me, I did something that he did. And immediately the next day he said, oh, you learned too fast, I'm not showing you anymore. And he never showed me anything else again. And from that point, I was like, hmm, okay, I got it. So I picked my own book up. I put my own, study my own things. And, and this is not like everyone, and it won't be like for everyone, but this is my story. Uh, I had to learn the hard way. So I had to do a lot of things, maybe 98% of it on my own, from mm. emotions to this or that. And even doing the things that I'm doing now, I do it on my own because if people don't want to, um, I, I tell people my circle, my circle doesn't get smaller, I get bigger. And I push the ones out that doesn't belong in it to let the other ones that need to be in it inside. Wow. Do you have anybody that works for you now? Um, I fire them all. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm not a micromanager, mm -hmm. but I am a person that I know what I want. So I know what works. Yeah. I, I've been doing this a very long time. Um, all from every piece of my social media to everything is, is has to be my voice and my words. I've had a lot of people who've come in and say chef, 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 so forth. So when I I met, and believe me, I've I've talked to some very high profile people. Mm -hmm. If they talk the wrong thing, I see you later. Right. I just literally they'd be like, Chef, what about No, bye. <laughs> You're wasting my time. I could be doing push ups. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but they'll start off with the same intentions. Mm -hmm. And if they see more in you, it, which is a compliment, they will try to capitalize, capitalize off of each and everything that you do, especially mm -hmm. if you have a platform that is more than one lane and it can spread out to so many different areas. And that's one of the reasons why I don't expose everything on social media because social media can break you or make you or, uh, and whatever. So me, it's all good. So when you get hired to do certain jobs, um, you must need to bring on some people or do you just do it all yourself? Um, certain jobs as far as like if you got hired to cook for, I don't know, 15 people or something like that. I, I don't cook for anyone anymore. Okay. I, I, you know, that's, that's part of that, you know, value part of it. People try to ask me, you know, the only time I'll cook if, if, um, I auction myself off. Right. So I'll oh, myself yeah. off for, that. you know, the Redskins awesome, yeah. or for Arnold for the after school all store kids or Fisher House. And I bring in really big bucks for that. Right. That's part of that. That self valuation. Um, but if people say, hey, chef, can you come over and do 100 people? Like, of course not. <laughs> not doing 100 mm -hmm. people. That's just ridiculous. You know, I said, go tell Robert Irvine to come over. Go tell Gordon Ramsay to come over. Well, you know, well, think of the same way. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But in retrospect, that if it's the homeless or if it's the military or if it's kids, I'm going to cook my butt off. Hmm. Like That's a easy. specific event or, yeah, or yeah, something you can yeah, get behind. Otherwise, yeah. and, and if it does have a a particular cause to it I, I will cook for someone that's, right. that's easy for me but not to an extent where I'm going to be a chef 24 7 no one does that anymore no one is in that realm which don't get me wrong I, I love being a chef uh, it's the hardest job <laughs> you could possibly ever have yeah. you know like your friend that came, who we were today mm -hmm. I mean those guys I commend them because I was there you can do hundreds and hundreds of hours and your life is not your own right. and sometimes I mean it's, it's very rewarding but it can also be very stressful um, and to me, if I, I tell people, Hey, uh, I talked to guys yesterday and I was like, Hey, write a book, you know, do this, do that. Think about the different options. Don't just put yourself in that one lane saying, well, I'm a, I'm a chef. I'm a cook. I'm going to cook. Okay. Think about something else. What else is goals with that? On that note of what else, man, like when, when I was learning about you, I don't even know everything, but you're a sommelier, you're an amazing ice sculptor, um, you're a chef, you're in the military, like first off what like brought you to want to do all of these things and just like learn ice sculpting and then also are there other things that like we don't know that's just like really dope 
it's a lot of things I know. people don't know <laughs> that I do. You know, I, I, I sometimes I, it's hard because people always say, Chef, you need to brag on yourself. I don't like bragging on myself. I don't like, I mean, I'm bad. I know I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just like to sit out in public, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I, I've, I've learned over the, the, the course of doing this, uh, you know, that sometimes you have to flex. Sometimes you have to put it out and let it be known who you are, you know, uh, for whatever reason that may be. And for me, it's for that awareness part of it. And also, and for myself as well, uh, you know, being solidified uh, for it. Um, I mean, I, I do so much. I mean, I, literally, I travel all over the world talking to thousands and thousands of people from country to country to military which I'm honored and privileged raising you know the last year plus 2.5 million dollars with all these organizations being a part of that being a part of something that's bigger uh, you know I received you know I was just here about a month ago uh, at the Capitol received the, the um, resolution for my advocacy for military which was extremely humbling to have all of those guys when they read it everyone came up to take pictures with me and mm -hmm. they're like oh they never do that <laughs> you know unless it's some big time guy there so i'm that big time <laughs> guy now and, and and that's what fused me um but, but now i just kind of I I, I I i i wait to see the next big thing mm. wow how do you feel about social media you know you mentioned it a little bit do you think social media is is uh doing more good for the world or you think it's doing more harm oh no i love social media I mean, it, it, regardless of the harm that it's doing, that's why it's social media. It's just like uh, freedom to, to speak your voice or your rights or whatever. And people might just be consuming too much of it. Here and and people there. can consume too much of it. And what people put out is what they put out. If they want to put out that negativity into the world and you want to feed off of it, then whatever. But at the same time, it can save lives. It can help people. It can. It does so much. <clears throat> you can't fault it for that. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I hate social media. I'm not getting on social media. Why? Ah, oh, that's not me. I don't want to do it. What, what are you talking about? You don't want to do it. What do you want to do? Uh, are you on LinkedIn or you this place, that place? Or like, yeah, I do that because that's, that's social media. <laughs> You're on a platform. Mm -hmm. People have to take it for what it's worth and look at it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all over. I have a great audience on LinkedIn and people, I just put content up. People are like, Jeff, what are you looking for? What do you what do you want? What are you doing here? I said, I'm here to entertain you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you come, if you want it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. Do I get into trolls on social media all the time or try to take <laughs> me out of my box? Of course I do. And uh, half of the time, um, a lot when you know my pictures goes around, I, I what I like to do, which is entertaining to me, because uh, if they say my name, they tag you or whatever, and people talk. Uh, if, if he said that to me about the French toast, I'll tell him to, to to do this and this, and I'll go back and I'll troll him like, and do what else? What else would you do? You would just yeah, eat yeah. that egg white and be quiet. Yeah, yeah. And they'll laugh. They'll laugh like, ah, oh, chef, you got me. And I'm, right. you know, so it's, it's comical. It's, it's how you take it. I, I'm kind of glad to hear you say that because I think sometimes the older crowd can, you know, get a mm. stick up their ass about, some of the things that are new and that are happening and like, oh, you know, it's causing people a lot of problems. And it can, like I said, people can overconsume it. It's not a, not a great thing to overconsume it. Um, you're also a, uh, not, uh, not just an ordinary chef. You also, uh, know how to whip up some awesome pastries. What are, mm. what are some, uh, like, what are some of your favorite, uh, pastries? Um, I, man, I love pastries. Uh, but you're not allowed to eat them anymore. You I, I don't eat pastries. Dang, uh, long, not even the ones you make? I'm not even the ones I make. Dang. <clears throat> I eat them by smell. So a long time ago when I was, <laughs> I was going through. That's depressing. It is depressing, <laughs> actually. Uh, and it happened a long time ago. I was, I love pastries because of my mom, you know, so forth. One day I was baking and I was making all these cookies and cookies and I just started eating them all. Like I said, I eat a lot. And all of a sudden, uh, I was a night bake. All of a sudden, my my skin started going up and down in front of me. I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? And it just started rising up and down, up and down. I went to the doctor and they were like, you had a sugar load. <laughs> you had a reaction to the pastries. Wow. And I'm like, oh, that won't happen again. <laughs> and I stopped completely. But I'm a competitive pastry chef, so I've competed in uh, Olympics and a lot of competitions. Uh, I like every plethora of pastries especially there's for, uh, pastries for the olympics i didn't know that there is olympics for cooking that's amazing wow. yeah there's an olympic for cooking I've, I've been that person so 
How do you make it to the Olympics to eat the food it, that it, the Olympians are making? I want to do that. <laughs> I, want, I want that job. Yeah. <laughs> that it, sounds amazing. It's a, all that little um, food you'll see on TV, that static food that looks all yeah. pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it's edible. Some of it's just for show. Mm -hmm. uh, it has categories that goes along with it. Uh, so, it's, I mean, it's pretty amazing to see um, – like I said, I never knew that you can do, do so much with pastries or even food. Uh, there's like a million different avenues and levels you can go. And then talk about the health and fitness industry with food. That's a whole different mm -hmm. body. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> here on, on this podcast, we talk about a lot about like learning new things, you know, and, and, and doing new things. Is there anything like new that you're getting to that started to pique your interest? And also like when you do approach new things, like maybe when you, when you figured you wanted to learn how to ice sculpt, what does that look like for you? Like how do you approach something you've never done before? Uh, how do I approach? I um, Knowledge base, first off. Mm -hmm. I mean, ice carve is a, a terrible example because I, I, I said I could do it and I didn't know how, but I did conquer it. Uh, knowledge base is everything to me. And knowing something, and I tell people, is it for a job or what you're doing or whatever? Vet everything, one hundred percent. Vet the people. Vet any call, just especially on social media. If you look in that perspective, you need to know a little bit about any and every person or everything that you're going into. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I approach it head on. I approach it with confidence, of course. Uh, I've never ever had that part of me where it says I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. We do that so much in life. I'm not qualified. You sort of this, this, this. Well, try. Yeah. Just try. It. And if you get denied, hey, at least you try. It. You had fifty fifty chance. Okay. Sheesh. Anything? How about anything now? Are you do are you picking up anything new these days? Uh, uh, a lot of acting. A lot of oh. acting. Uh, so I I do a lot of commercials. Uh, I do a lot of speaking, a lot of speaking, um, more so people don't even want me to cook. They just want me to come and speak. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty good speaker. I can uh, I can talk to you a lot yeah. <laughs> and tell you a lot of stories. Uh, but I love the part of it in L.A. I'm actually getting up another place in D.C., but <clears throat> I'm getting a place in L.A. Just because I have some projects coming up now uh, on the acting side of it, uh, wow. commercials, uh, even my book that's coming out uh, next year. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah, you were saying, um, you know, earlier how for you, like, uh, sounds like working with other people uh, doesn't always work out that great for you to the point where you had to, you know, fire a lot of people over the years and things like that. Um, but it also seems like you had to really put in a lot of good hard work for many years um, having different uh, jobs. So how did you kind of make it through that part um, you know, like to be able to get to, you know, to work your way up to, to be able to work in the white house. And then it wasn't like you, you know, just cooked one day in the white house, you were there for several years and stuff like that. So how, how did you make that work? Even though it maybe doesn't fit, sounds like it doesn't fit your mindset. Um, how do I make failure? Failure. I tell people failure is a necessity. You have to have it and you're going to have it. I don't care how big or how small or what it is. Uh, for me personally, it was my uh, driving factor. I failed a lot, even in the, in the culinary industry. I knew I wasn't gonna. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to win when I competed all those times against all those guys. Cause I didn't have the training, I didn't have the knowledge, I didn't have the skill set. I looked in a book. They had. They went to school for ten years, mm. <clears throat> but I competed against them, and I told them they're not gonna win. Even when they won, I said, I told you, <laughs> right? They didn't get what I was saying. I was saying that I won because I competed. I did it, mm -hmm. right? And it didn't get me. So I'll be back the next time. So now, uh, like you said, it, it doesn't fit my category. So that's when, that's when you know about that word growth, right? Mm -hmm. That growth is everything. Some people, uh, like you said, again, they try to become complacent in life and things, and they just want to stay there. It's good to just have that one little savings account that's not, you know, uh, incurring any uh, interest on it. <laughs> and it's a million bucks in there. You're getting two dollars a month. Right. Um, people don't take chances. People don't put themselves out there. People don't understand that this world is limitless to, to the opportunities that they have. And just if you just twitch just one little centimeter over your whole world can change. When, when did you realize that for yourself? 
you know, like you're you're working for other people, you know, and then you're like you get to a point where you're like, I want to just bounce on out of some of this stuff and just really be free and do my own thing. Um, I I actually learned at a young age. I started my first catering business. Um, wow. Uh, wow. I started my first catering business at maybe like 90, well, oh my God, 15 plus years ago. Mm. And it was just me. And I came in to a bunch of senior guys and I was a new guy on the block. Didn't know half the stuff. Now you know a quarter of the stuff they know, but I said, I know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I was, I worked for all these companies and they were paying me at the time, you know, $50 an hour as a chef, you know, which was great money. It wasn't enough. Uh, not for what I wanted and what I was giving. Uh, when I came in and told them what my thoughts were, um, they looked at me like I was crazy. You know, get out of here. Uh, okay. I just did it. And my first client that I got just by accident, and I just started my business, was one of the most well-known clients <laughs> ever. This is back when AOL was uh, AOL was a thing, yeah. <laughs> and it involved AOL. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget. I did the I did the event, and I didn't know what to charge or how to charge it. I got out, and his wife came and said, "Andre, how much you owe me?" I said, "I don't know." Um, you, I'm, this is my first one. I was honest. She brought me her book down that she wrote, and she said, "Never forget your worth." I got in the car, and it was a check for eight thousand dollars. Right? That was a lot of. It's not I mean net money now, but back then it was a huge amount of money. From that, it just clicked. Literally, that's when I said, "Okay, I'm not doing any bulk." <laughs> you know, I'm not doing 100 people. I'm not doing 300 people. I'm going to keep it just like I am. I'm going to perfect that. And uh, even now, uh, the things that I'm doing is me all the time. Mm. You were talking about complacency and how, like, a lot of people, you know, they become comfortable, become a complacent. Now, for you in the past, have you had times where you were just like comfortable and you're like, ooh, I'm, I'm chilling? And if you did have that, what is it that brought you out of that? Or what is it that made you be like, ah, this isn't me. I got to push forward. Have I had a time where I was just complacent? Yeah. Um, honestly, um, in the military, in the military, it was, I worked for a lot of high profile people and it was just, I was trained to do the things that I was doing, mm. um, but it limited me so much, you know, with the clearances, with this, that, or how and how to reach. Um, and it was just by circumstance that one of my principles came at me entirely wrong. I was the, on top of my game. I was the best of my best of who I am. And all of a sudden this man came to me with, negativity you know why because of my size he looked at me and he judged me off of my size which takes me back to a thing that everybody's going to prejudge you regardless no matter what your resume may say you can look at you like we laughed at about lululemon earlier today <laughs> they'll look at you and they're going to prejudge you they're going to say they're going to say if he's or she or she is this person or that way or that per- but when he did that and, and said to me that I was trying to be intimidating and I was trying to imitate him and I was trying to do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, whoa, it blew my mind. At that point in time, I was like, and here's the thing. No one had my side. No one had my back because of his statue. Mm. That's when I said, I got it. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this better. And now I'm better than him. Now I'm bigger than him. Now I'm not complacent. Yeah. Okay. How are you running off of no sleep? I've watched you cook at 6 a.m. this morning, watched you train these guys to their, you know, couldn't even do a push-up anymore. And now you're doing on this podcast and you got zero sleep last night. Uh, that is true. I didn't get to it. It was the wine. <laughs> <laughs> the wine did it. <laughs> the wine's pushing us through. The yeah. wine is pushing us through, right? Uh, you, you know what? It's that self-drive. That's self-motivation, and I, I have to say it's you guys because you guys have me hype. Mark, uh, like you said, the team, I am 100%. Um, I think I said to someone, I don't know who I, I remember saying it to earlier, but even, I never said it to you guys. I said, 
more we started working out, the more hype I was becoming. I have yeah. to I say I got to watch myself because I can get over hype. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm just kind of like that super saying, you know, <laughs> you level up. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> the more the angrier you get, the bigger and stronger yeah. you yep. become. That's me, <laughs> all the way. <laughs> have you been like this for like like your whole life? You just I, like you've just been working off of. I, I have actually, uh, unfortunately, but yes. Okay. You like to eat a lot, I and uh, you kept mentioning eating chickens. Like, which just sounds weird. Like, people normally say chicken, and you're always talking about chickens. Uh, how much do you eat? Uh, I would do four whole chickens. I, I love chickens. Uh, I love chickens. I even love the egg, because I do about 24 of those a day, boiled eggs. Only uh, three whole eggs. The rest are whites. <coughs> The Man, chickens, chickens see you coming. They're like, they, damn, they, we, they better, run. <laughs> we better get they, the hell out. <laughs> they run. Um... But the caveat is uh, I am a chef, so I do know how to make some good chickens and I know how to make it where it's tender and and I'll use a chicken like a snack. I'll eat a whole chicken. It only takes me a few minutes because I'm just I'll just grab it, pull out the bone. It's like a it's like a magic. <laughs> I, I think that chicken like I realize there's chicken like everywhere. There's like buffalo wings and there's like KFC and there's all these kinds of places. Right. But eating like a whole chicken, I, I think a lot of uh, fitness people. For some reason, I'm not thinking about that because people are always talking about expense. Like, oh, I don't want to buy that because it's expensive. It's like an entire chicken is actually really inexpensive. Yeah. And, you know, depending on your appetite, you know, you happen to eat four of them a day. I think most people that might last them for a day or two. Mm -hmm. It is true. You're right about that. Uh, it's that knowledge base. You know, it's easier for people to go to one of these um um, like Costco mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Like, like I go to Restaurant Depot, I'll get a whole case of chicken, <clears throat> whole chickens, and it'll cost me maybe like 50 bucks, right? But that'll have, let's say, 30 chickens inside of it. Jesus. You know, that's a lot of chicken. So a lot of protein. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of protein, exactly. You, this turns me on. So <laughs> <laughs> just to think about all that, and I can fabricate it myself, and I can make it to my liking, uh, how I want it, uh, tender and juicy, mm. and, and just and just kind of like kill it. But I also have a huge refrigerator in my place. Yeah. I, I put them in and kind of cycle them in and out. How do we uh, prepare <clears throat> a whole chicken? What do we uh, got to do? So I have, oh my God, I have a plethora of, I have a, a smoker, I have a charcoal yeah. grill, I have a gas grill. What about just the oven? We'll stick the, to something okay, simple. Okay, oven, uh, which is even better. <clears throat> I use uh, some racks. I use bricks in the oven. Um, I'll fabricate it, open it up. regular bricks in the oven? Uh, yeah, well, you heat them up. You heat oh, them up, okay. you put them in. I mean, a couple different ways. Even if you're just going to put it in the oven on a sheet pan, um, you'll open it up and butterfly it lay them flat what i do is i use a uh, cuisinart or you'll use something to chop up garlic parsley whatever flavor profile you want some olive oil get it rub so it so that under. way you're getting flavor in the chicken in the chicken so you go under the skin over top of the skin this guy's got secrets yes, i, I got secrets you know rub it smooth this rub it down uh put it in let it get nice and crispy you have a perfect chicken every time oh my god Sounds good. Uh, that does sound. I'm really hungry now. That does sound delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what else does your diet look like? Mm. Everything. Uh, I like vegetables. Um, like I said, I'm a carnivore by heart. <laughs> uh, vegetables are a necessity, or just kind of like on it, on it because I pay for it. Uh, if I do pay for it, mm -hmm. but uh, super superfoods, of course, always a plus. Like I was saying earlier. Um, with uh, quinoa and amaranth, uh, protein pastas. Um, I'm, 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 I'm simple but complicated because of my lifestyle. Uh, so uh, I know how to make food taste great, you know, especially in our industry as far as the health and fitness comes. When guys do come to me and I do support them and help them out, I change their whole mindset about how they should eat and why. And then I kind of explain it to them, just like a new diet fast that's coming out. Everything is, you know, the fast and the ketos or anything. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. When you put it in perspective, it's all about your personal preference. No, I think that's such a, a big deal, though, because, <clears throat> you know, when a lot of people think about dieting, when they think about the food they got to eat, they don't enjoy it because, number one, they don't know how to make it taste good. So when they, they don't have a meal to look forward to, and Mark always talks about, like, having something that you look forward to every day, because if it's tough for you to eat that food, then it's difficult. But if you not, if you learn how to cook, you know, then your diet isn't a diet it's just like for you right now it's just a way of living but you're eating healthy every single day because your food tastes amazing yeah it, it it is amazing i mean and you know what i'm living proof i'm mark's living proof of that you look at us you are living proof you look at us and you're like what are they eating like they tell you like oh, wait a second that's not right i'm not eating that i'm eating 
some greens and a piece of dry fruit <laughs> or so I don't know, dry piece of chicken. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, they, they say, I'm like, wow, that sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you eat it. How long? Well, I've been eating it for the last five years. <laughs> I'm surprised you're still alive. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's all perspective you, that you don't have to go with that. Thing. A lot of people just want to go with the flow. If if you see it on social media, you see it on TV, most likely you're going to follow it, mm -hmm. you know, but. And that's fine. No problem with that. Just follow the right people and, and, and things that's on social media that are influencing you. Are there any uh, any cuts of meat that people are sleeping on? You know, like earlier today, you guys had uh, you seared and cooked a, uh, a whole tenderloin. And even that was new for me. But I knew like a filet, like, oh, OK, that's going to come out and be amazing. But is there something out there that you're like, man, how come people if people are complaining about not having a, a healthy meal for, like on the cheap, especially? Why don't they look at? This type of cut? Um, it, well, it's it, that's a great question. There's so many different type of cuts. It also goes on personal preference mm -hmm. as far as it's fish. I don't do a lot of farm-raised fish. You know, like the whole thing is like the farm-raised tilapia where, you know, tilapia mm -hmm. is a bottom feeder, just like catfish, whatever, whatever, eating its own, yada, yada. Its own <laughs> poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Its own poop. Um, uh, but the meats, uh, now... The marketers are getting very smart. The meat cuts that used to be extremely less expensive are becoming overly priced. You know, like, for instance, a flank steak or a skirt steak. Um, and that's why I say you should buy in bulk. If you're going to go out and shop and you're going to these little places where you're paying so much money when you can just go and buy it in bulk and freeze it, fabricate it, cut it into its simple portions, just like the tenderloin one a day. I mean, pay like 100 bucks for that. But that's about 200, 200 plus dollars worth. Well, if, if you went out and I served that to you, hmm. you're going to pay $75 for one portion or more. $75 for one portion. And we more. had like 10 or something. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, I think you ate three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I know you're counting. <laughs> yeah, when you were telling him like, oh, it's, it's your plate. You can do whatever you want with it. Like <laughs> As far as like the like the, uh, the potatoes and the cert, like the sides and all that, I thought you were just going to grab another steak and just throw it on top of the other steak. Yeah. That would have <laughs> been good. That would have been even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but doing it in bulk is, is just a smarter way of mm -hmm. shopping. Everybody needs to realize that and kind of understand it. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to do that prep work or just fabricating. You know, like I said earlier about my go-to would be an icon meals and, and because of travel and whatnot. If you find someone on a niche, take it. If not, mm -hmm. do it yourself. And what do you mean by fabricating? I was about to say, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Fabric <laughs> fab fabricating. Uh, unfortunately, when we did the tenderloin a day, they had already cleaned it. Cleaning it, fabricating just cleaning it from the fat, from the silver skin, or even with the chicken. When you have a whole chicken, you have to know how to fabricate, how to cut the bone in the middle, the breast, open the plates up, clean it out, and make it feasible for you to work with. There's mm -hmm. sometimes just like stuff on the meat that you yeah. can't, like that tenderloin, that... um extra fatty part like it sounds great like oh we'll leave the fat on there and it will taste better but that that fat is not easy to work with it's something that would like maybe end up in a stew or could maybe put it in like a scramble or yeah. something but yeah. it's not you can't really do much with it if not wagyu or kobe <laughs> that fat is uh, is irrelevant <laughs> what's the uh what's the protocol like you know at the white house was it real you know was it real strict on what you can do and what you can't do um how, how was some of that? And then also, too, at that time, like, you know, did you have a phone and have access to, you know, social media and like different things? Because I, I would imagine that would be you can't just sit there and take selfies. And not, not that you would do that, but <clears throat> they must have rules, right? Oh, they do. Of course, people break the rules. I'm not a rule breaker like that. I, like I said, I didn't take I didn't like to take pictures. Or I never asked people to take pictures. Now, don't get me wrong. I kind of regret it now. Because it's the history of your life going yeah. back over it, you know, looking at the things that you've done and you've accomplished. I mean, now it's like everybody is just jumping on it or jumping in people's face. And it's like it gets overwhelming where it's like, OK, relax, calm down. I've, I've seen the best of the best break their protocol just because they're like, oh, my God, I'm such a fan of this person, or that person. And it just it just goes crazy. But um, protocol is, is uh, hard. Uh, of course, there are rules and regulations of what you can and what you can't do. And that's one of the things where I said that uh, to me doing this is a million times more impactful. You know, I, I get to help people. I get to save lives. I get to change lives. I get to inspire and motivate. And in retrospect, they do the exact same thing for me in return. Mm -hmm. With that, what, that's what fuels me to keep going. And believe me, I go 24-7 all the time.
I was actually about to ask that, like your day to day, because you were mentioning to us in the gym, like how much you've been traveling. Is it ever slowing down? Like, has it slowed down or like, um, it's just, you know what um, is, is I keep thinking there's going to plateau and it just becomes more and more and more and more. I mean, literally, I mean, it's a blessing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I never, um, I never in a million years thought that it would be to this level um, just because of me being me and me doing what I want to do. And just because of people telling me, oh, you should do this or you should, everybody's going to tell you. I mean, oh my God, I've had so many people, even advisors, even with people from social media who's like, hey, I'll do this. Who's running your social media account? I'm like, I run my social media. I do this. I Oh, no, no, no. Who's behind it? Who's the content person? It's just me. Mm -hmm. Just me doing what I do naturally every day. And then there comes a time where you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. <clears throat> me, personally, I'm an intro extrovert, right? Uh, um, I'll rather just kind of be to myself alone on the side. Uh, but then when they say action, it's time to work. I tell people I put in perspective, and they ask me about, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you get up and you keynote speak? How do you get in front of mm -hmm. the camera? And I say, I act as though it's my very last time and my only chance. I only have one chance and I have to give everything I got into mm -hmm. each and every chance. Some people that might make them freak out even more. <laughs> <laughs> they might just, uh, you know, run, run for the hills. <laughs> that is true. I think this is how you become a celebrity chef though. Like you know, probably don't really necessarily even set out to do that. You just work hard. You, um, sounds like you accepted a lot of jobs that, um, that ended up giving you a lot of great experience and then put you in a good position to now be a celebrity chef. And then also, um, it's your personality, you know, and your size doesn't hurt, you know, and maybe like maybe in the military and maybe in other places in your life, your size maybe worked against you. Um, at least just from people ju judging you, being judgmental towards of you. Of course. Well, now someone takes a picture of you at the white house. You know, this is the white house chef. Everyone's like, what? That guy cooks for our country's like leader? <laughs> like, oh, well, of course he does. Look at the size, you know. It, it, I think it makes people feel good. It's a good story. Like this guy's got 24 inch arms. And so I think a lot of the things that maybe you didn't even really realize were gonna be these big attributes ended up paying off later on. No, it's, it's true. Uh, you know, people, I get a question like, Chef, what, you know, you're such a, a presence and what took you so long to become famous? And I'm like, that wasn't my job. My job was to do my job, and I did it diligently. I wasn't thinking. I put people. I put many people in front of TV shows and so forth. But I was always that person in the background because that's my mindset. I was a leader. I am a leader. And I'm always going to do that. But I always told people, if I give you this opportunity, if I put you in position, it's up to you what you're going to do with it. Uh, all of them fail except for one, and the one that did fail is the one I actually talk about now, who uh, took his own life, mm. right? Uh, and he had the most potential. Um, and through that, I vicariously, you know, represent him and everything that he's did for his country and his wife and his kids. And for me, it making me realize those things. So now, um, with this platform and, and, and don't get me wrong, you don't just have, have a picture taken and, and act as though it's going to be forever. The thing about that I tell people is like, all oh, this because of a picture, I'm like, no, all this because of hard ass work. Yeah, hard ass work before and after. Before and after. You have to have that foundation. You put all those things once you realize, like you said, Mark, you put all those things that encompasses you that other people see, and then you use them to whatever you have to do to make it known. If anybody does say it's because of a picture, I mean, if you if you think about it, like, first off, you look the way you look because you've been working out for decades. You're in that position because you've been cooking for decades and you have the skill to be there. So if there was a different guy in that picture, that that would not be the same. Well, they you know, it's funny you said that because it actually almost someone actually tried to make it happen. They did the exact same thing <laughs> right after <laughs> to to tr it. they literally did. And it was from someone extremely famous, uh, high profile in the political aspect of it, because they wanted to try to divert it a little bit because it was so much 
hoorah. If you saw the memes and the things that were behind it, it was kind of out of control. <laughs> the, inter- the internet is a beast. <laughs> but um, but uh, the funny part about it was they tried to make it happen and it failed miserably, you know? <laughs> yeah. Are you, um, are you a political person? Am I a political? Well, in this in this world, I, I I can't be religious or political because it'll cause such a divide mm. uh, with so many different entities. Yeah. Because and that tr- and I found out early on where people were trying to make me pick sides. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, and no, and and, <laughs> and then what benefit is it? Yeah. Um, what about being uh, in the White House and uh, you know serving under certain presidents? Like, um, do you ever have a situation where it maybe it maybe it's not you know, straight up uh, uh, political, but um, you ever have a situation where maybe said something and it, like is against maybe the current party that's in office or anything like that and kind of learn like maybe I shouldn't have said that type of thing or, or have not. I ever said anything? Yeah. You ever, or you kind of like see stuff like that happen? Or? Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't say anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at my job. You're focused. I'm uh, overly focused. I'm probably one of the most focused people in, you know, <laughs> that you probably can meet as far as secrets or just knowing uh, what is what and and what my position is and how it stands. At the same time, I used to also be a security detail. You know, mm. I used to go out and red zone moves and do this and that. So you have to switch up on your mindsets and things of the sort. Um, when it, people ask me all the time, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, long as I'm not being disrespected, <laughs> right. as long as I'm not threatened yeah, you're not or, getting involved. or whatever, I'm, I'm not getting involved. People sometimes, and I'll, I'll tell you honestly, people said, how can you do X, Y, and Z? And I'll say to someone, where do you work? How long you work there? Oh, I've been there for about, you know, 19 years. I said, quit your job. Quit your job, walk away. And they're like, what? I've been there for this? I said, so why are you saying it to me? Right. <laughs> Put it in perspective. If you have someone that you like or don't like mm-hmm. or whatever, you still work there. If you hate your boss, if you if you love your boss or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all about perspective. And like I said, the internet is a, a hell of a thing. <laughs> so if people kind of uh, lean into it too much, it can consume you. But if they use it for the right reason, it can um, it can build you. What do you have coming up next? Oh God, uh, traveling uh, everywhere. Um, my I told you I'm doing a couple of TV shows. I'm getting ready to move to LA at the end of this month. Um, my book is coming out and, uh, man, I have so much stuff. I don't even know what's coming up next. Got to look at that schedule, right? I do have to look at the schedule. I got some great things, you know, living legacy awards and people honor me and I, I, which is so humbling. It keeps me going, but, uh, I just, I'm just that person that's trying to make this place a better place like you and love each other, do some push ups <laughs> <laughs> and support. That's great. Anything else over there, Andrew? Yeah, I, I don't think we've mentioned it on the podcast yet, but you run off of like two, three hours of sleep a night, right? Uh, two hours. Two hours, okay. Um, it, it's funny because people hear about like, uh, oh, there's been studies done that like 0.001% of population can, can live off of two hours of sleep. <laughs> Somebody admits it and then everybody calls bullshit, but have you like gotten any testing done or anything like that to uh, just, uh, yes <laughs> okay cool that's great i had plenty of tests plenty <laughs> of like take this sleep medications um it is i'm just that functional person i, I don't know how much you said what, what is the population one point it, it's it's two something point. It, it's one of those things where like uh somebody down the road will be like oh i think i have that and like no you don't there is like a gene like but that. there is a yeah. gene yeah yeah but yeah, people will say like, oh, I think I got that. So, nah, you don't. <laughs> it, it, I, I know that gene. It's actually called the incredible gene. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have 24 inch You got to have, have it, You yeah. got to do 2,222 <laughs> push-ups and exactly. had to have been 700 pounds in your lifetime. But uh, no, I, I'm just that functional guy that, mm-hmm. that can do that. I, and sometimes I even wonder about myself. Sometimes I even doubt myself like not sleeping last night and not sleeping a day prior um and i'm just like wow how, sometimes i think i'm like how, did I, how can i do this how can i how am i so energetic and how am i still running mm-hmm. but like i said i use that a caveat that i'm feeding off of you guys now and i'll continue to do so and then with the thousand emails i have <laughs> after this yeah what time do you go to bed uh, I go to bed about uh, one o'clock or so, uh, get up at three, uh, and then I'll meditate for that 15, 20 minutes. And then that's when I do my push ups for that hour or so. Yeah. Then I start my day. That's late. <laughs> that's late. <laughs> How, have you been like this for a really long time? A very long time. Uh, since the military, mm. 
yeah, it just, it just became a normalcy for me. Um, like I said, and don't get me wrong, I, I would not, I hope no one else is like that because uh, it's terrible for you, especially if your body is not um, equipped for it or adapted right. for it. Do you, yeah. do you fall asleep occasionally? Like, cause you're, you're up until one. So like if you have any downtime to like watch TV or do something, do you so, doze off here and there? So if I do if I doze off, I'll literally doze off for maybe 10 minutes. Right. And the, the bad, sleep. the bad part about that is when I wake up, I thought I've slept for three hours <laughs> and it's only been like 10 minutes or oh, so. Shit. And it just recharges me and re-energizes me. So, mm. uh, that's that, you know, good you and got bad. A lot of energy. <laughs> Might actually be a sand cause like Goku barely sleeps. Yeah. So another thing that makes this guy a mutant is, um, I think you told me you ran two miles in like 13 something minutes and you weighed 300 pounds. Yeah, I was almost 300, uh, 13, uh, 1330. Right there. So I was always doing under fourteen hundred before my quadricep was blown, and even now uh, I'm still uh, I, I I I can run, <laughs> and that's a lot of kinetic energy. I, I tell people to understand it about being training and about knowing your body, which is going so important. It is for every pound or every five pounds that I gain, I had to compensate for that. Um, some people just kind of let it go and they want to gain the muscle and, you know, cause you got to have that flexibility. You have to have that endurance that goes along with it. So, and it just doesn't happen by you running. You have to stress your body out, you know, pack on some more pounds or do something that's totally extraordinary. That's out of character with yourself to make your body say, I'm going into survival mode. So mm -hmm. that's what my body basically does all the time. Survival mode. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. Like even this workout this morning, you know, we or I was taking some extra rest. You were taking a little bit, but he was like looking at us like, hmm, OK, let me just wait for these two so I can get my damn. <laughs> like, what's wrong with these youngsters? <laughs> <laughs> like your endurance for your size is something that I literally just blows my blows my mind. You know, people don't expect that. People have this idea that like a big guy can't have endurance, but you're the exact opposite. And, and you know, I appreciate that because uh, this morning I didn't feel like it was endurance for me. I, I could have done a lot more just because I've been on the road for so long. Uh, but I'm glad I'm not because you guys took me to the ringer. So I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> but it was a, it was fun. I, I loved it. It made me rethink um, and saying that, you know, I can't wait to, to, to get to L.A. and kind of kind of be stationary because I'm always overworked so many different places. So now I just want to get to a gym, relax mm. a little bit and just work out. <laughs> and and then I think I'm going to, you know, you said enough time, I think I may even compete next year just so I can say that I did it, oh, you know, man. just so I can get that rim. I mean, cause I'm, I'm there all the time with, you know, at Olympia with Arnold classic, yeah. and, you know, the strong man. So might as well, you know, walk the walk. Great motivation for you. Oh, oh, yeah, God. of course. And others. I and think. you love going all in. So I go all in. Yeah, it Easily. was a, it was really funny during the uh, the live stream uh, earlier that we did on our other channel. Uh, somebody was like, he, he's breathing so hard after like two sets. There's no way he gets in over 2000 pushups a day. <laughs> and then the next set and then the next set. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, they're doing 50 pushups in between each set. <laughs> and they just slowly quieted everybody <laughs> down as you guys kept going. Oh my God. And it's funny thing because like, you know, I, I could hear Mark and Seema breathing and I, I could hear you too on the, on the microphone, but it was like, it wasn't even close. Yeah. He was so calm and collected. And then like, like Mark, it sounded like you had like a plane shooting out of your nose. It was just like jet fuel. Just <laughs> I like, might have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing people got to understand, man. Like, you've been doing this for so long like people want to like jump into what you're doing but if like you can build up to something like this you just got to do it for years and years it, and years it, it is true like i said rhabdo myonitis is a is a real thing you can hurt yourself uh and you know speaking of the breathing part sometimes when i i do my push-ups in the morning i breathe on purpose uh because i don't have any music i don't have any sound i breathe because um, it's my tranquil place. It's like, and even I caught myself doing it when we we're working out today, doing the things I started breathing out mm -hmm. because it reminded me of why I was doing what I was doing. Mm. Yeah. It, it's stimulating actually. Yeah. You hear, you hear your own body breathe. It's true. And you kind of get connected to, uh, like almost like your heartbeat in a way. It gets you kind of motivated, gets you fired up. Yeah, is that how you kind of deal with like yeah, the other, the negative side of the internet? You know, the haters, the bad comments. You just like look at this, <laughs> it's like look at like look, a, look at look at my like my arms. Like you you want to oh, hate on on me? <laughs> uh, they they love me. They love to <laughs> yeah. hate me. So I'm good with that. That's I, good. I, you know, at one point in time, uh, because I'm a by nature I'm a 
I don't know, not aggressive guy, I'm, I'm very aggressive, <laughs> but by nature, I, I, uh, I process a lot of different things. And it, sometimes people will bother me on there. Uh, and other times I have to think about my audience and, you know, about the kids that's following me or, and sometimes I'll come back them because I know it's going to be young kids looking mm -hmm. and waiting for, what is he going to say? What is mm -hmm. he, how is he going to handle this? And a lot of people do it. And a lot of people, even the ones I handled it with, they'll join on my team or if they don't, so be it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was awesome having you here today. Really appreciate your time. You know, thanks for serving our country. And, uh, you know, you're all heart, man. It was it was an honor to have you here. We it had a lot of fun today. Here. We did. We had a lot of fun. Where can people find you? Uh, people can find me um, in a plane. But if it's on social media, it's going to be at uh, IG's Real Chef Rush, one word. Uh, Twitter, Real Chef Rush. Um, uh, LinkedIn, Andre Rush. Or I have a Facebook page, uh, Andre Rush chef rush and chefrush.com so strength is never weakness weakness never strength catch y'all later